From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. The war between Israel and Palestine mil militants from Gaza is now in its second day with more exchanges of missiles and gunfire. Hundreds of civilians on both sides are reported killed. Here in California, people coming from all across the state to support a street vendor whose cart was flipped over last weekend. And a busy weekend for Governor Newsom as he signs and vetoes dozens of bills. We'll break down what got through and which ones he sent back. Good morning. It's Sunday, October 8th. I'm Kelsey Thorid. Palestinian rocket attacks on Israel continue this morning, just one day after simmering conflict erupted into war. These are scenes today of damaged cars and buildings in a town in southern Israel near the border with Gaza. Already hundreds of Israeli and Palestinians have been killed and thousands wounded. Saturday was the deadliest day of violence that Israel has seen in 50 years. CBS's Bradley Blackburn joins us from New York with more on the conflict and how the U.S. is responding. Kelsey, CBS News just received an updated casualty count from Israeli officials. They say 500 Israelis have been killed. That is both military and civilian, and they expect that number to continue to rise. Overnight Sunday, Israeli forces fought back. Explosions shaking Gaza in the early morning, less than 24 hours after war broke out. At dawn Saturday on a Jewish holiday, the Palestinian militant group Hamas launched thousands of rockets from Gaza into Israel and launched an invasion at the border, breaking through fences and attacking by sea. In some towns, militants sparked gun battles and an unknown number of Israeli civilians and soldiers were seized and taken into Gaza. Very scary situation. Um, you know, many people uh, have died already and we hear about people being kidnapped. Overnight, the rocket strikes from Gaza continued. This Israeli hospital in a coastal city took a direct hit. We are just now trying to evaluate the damages. This has been a very, very difficult day. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his country is at war and promised to win it. On Saturday, President Biden spoke to Netanyahu by phone and gave his full support. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Full stop. There are questions about how Israeli intelligence missed this threat, but the counterattack is underway. Airstrikes took out a 14-story building believed to house Hamas offices. And Israeli army reserves have been mobilized for a renewed conflict that may just be getting started. The concern, of course, is that it could drag on or grow to include others in the region. In his remarks yesterday, President Biden warned potential actors who might be hostile to Israel to stay out of this conflict, Kelsey. And Bradley, a lot of people are wondering, is this conflict affecting travel into Israel at this point? It is because of the potential dangers in the air. Many major airlines have canceled their flights into and out of Israel's largest airport. Uh, United, Delta and American all say that they're monitoring this situation closely. And Kelsey, Delta says it's working with the U.S. government to try to help any U.S. citizens who are struggling to get home right now. Well, thank you, Bradley Blackburn. Appreciate it. And gunfire could be heard overnight in another town in southern Israel. With the outbreak... With the outbreak of hostilities, civilians in both Israel and Gaza are stuck in the crossfire. Our Betty Yu caught up with a Bay Area man who was visiting family in Israel when the missile strike began. San Francisco business owner Manny Akutiel shared video from his family's home outside Jerusalem. Oh my God. Missiles being intercepted above me. I saw a site a few miles away that had been hit by a missile. I mean, I could see the actual plume of smoke coming out of it. My cousin texted me last night and a missile had hit a place three blocks away from her house in Tel Aviv. Manny flew to Israel three days ago to attend his niece's bat mitzvah and his father's 80th birthday. 
Seven sirens have gone off since, which sent his family running to a bomb shelter. The fact that there was a ground assault and, you know, people have been kidnapped uh, and taken from their homes and their homes have been invaded, it just adds a very chilling feeling to what's going on. And I just, I pray for a de-escalation. I have a flight, but it's not for another 10 days. And I don't know, I am scared. I'm nervous. I might not be able to get out. The surprise attack that killed at least 250 people happened during a major Jewish holiday Saturday. Israel's prime minister said the country is now at war with Hamas and vowed to inflict an unprecedented price. I have uh, a niece in the army. Um, I have friends who live in that area. Marco Sermonetta is the San Francisco-based Consul General of Israel. The first thing that needs to be put out there is that uh, Israel will defend itself and will respond to this outrageous barbaric attack uh, with whatever means it has at its disposal. Zaki Shaheen is a Palestinian-American activist who does work that supports human rights. I really hope that we have a balanced approach from an international perspective moving forward to speak out against any violence that impacts any civilian anywhere in the world. And going back to the fear that is being felt, we're really concerned about the amount of violence that's about to be levied against Palestinian civilians. Because historically, and I want to make this point very strongly as well, uh, the brunt of the destruction and the death that has been caused by uh, Israeli state-sanctioned military campaigns has not been borne by militant groups or by terrorists. In the days ahead, Manny said he's focused on the safety of his family. It is hard to put into words what it feels like to watch a crowded synagogue have to run under tables and to hide and to see a father cover his children with his prayer shawl. It was overwhelming. I, after it all went finished, I went outside and I cried because it just it I could feel the the the, the heat of the moment and the and the fear and I could see the fear uh, in my people's eyes. Stay up to date with all of the latest coming out of Israel on our website, kpix.com, and streaming on CBS News Bay Area. Now let's get to a check of our local weather with Darren Peck. Happy to say there's no more heat advisories for today. Some parts of the bay are going to be 10 to 15 degrees cooler than you were yesterday, especially if you're near the water. Look what came back today marine layer. It's not widespread. It's not a total gray out. But we will see a little more of the marine layer through the morning today. And that's not saying a lot. We didn't see any over the last few days. There's going to be just a little sliver of it left in time for the Blue Angel show today for Fleet Week, but it's not going to impact the show. The show will be just fine. Instead, the focus is the cooler temperatures. City was in the mid and upper 80s yesterday. You're barely going to 69 today. And if you take a look at the inland valleys, you'll be back down into the 80s after climbing well into the 90s over the last few days. Tomorrow is much cooler than this. And there's a small chance of rain. I'll see you with that in the complete forecast in just a few minutes. Community members coming together in Alameda, rallying around a hot dog vendor whose cart was seen in a viral video being pushed to the ground last Sunday by a permit inspector in San Francisco. Dot Lin was at the rally where people came from as far away as Southern California to support the vendor in a buyout event. This is the hot dog vendor's first day back on the job. Organizers hope this will put some money back in his pocket and hopefully raise enough money for him to buy a new car. A long line of people waiting for bacon-wrapped hot dogs. They're here to support this vendor, Juan Carlos Ramirez. I appreciate all the love and support. This is amazing. This is going to get me up on my toes. Last Sunday, a San Francisco Public Works street inspector chased him down near the waterfront and knocked over his cart. The city was cracking down on illegal food vendors. I felt helpless, with no help at all, embarrassed and just frightened. The city confiscated his cart. Juan Carlos started selling hot dogs three months ago. He lives in San Jose with his wife and kids. I do this to pay the bills and to feed my family. I'm trying to get a permit, but it's hard right now, so I'll do whatever it takes to feed my family. The public humiliation that Juan Carlos faced is the reason why we are all getting together for him, to let him know, you know, that we, we don't condone that behavior. Alex Inamorado advocates for food vendors. He co-organized the buyout. 
Juan Carlos borrowed food carts from friends for the event. They moved it from San Francisco to Alameda due to Fleet Week. It would have been different had he just gave him a citation in a professional manner instead of just you know, destroying his property. Some supporters drove hours from Norwalk and Rancho Cucamonga. What happened to him wasn't right, so we're here to support him and be here with the community. Supporters want the city to fire the inspector. You can't just push anyone, you know, like that's the wrong. You can't do it like that. I believe that Public Works and San Francisco has bigger fish to fry with all everything else that's going on. Public Works says it's investigating and released a statement. We train our employees in de-escalation techniques with the goal of defusing tense situations. In this circumstance, we did not meet that threshold and we apologize. As for Juan Carlos, these strangers are now new friends. After this event, I feel like a completely different person. These past days was, was really bad, so this day just made it better. In three hours, they say they sold about 250 hot dogs and raised roughly $3,000. Yes, they say that's more than enough money to buy a brand new cart. Fire crews in Solano County responded to a 36-acre vegetation fire yesterday afternoon near East Tabor and Charleston Street in Susan City. Time lapse from the alert wildfire cameras show how close the fire was to some homes. Fire crews were able to contain the flames and fortunately no structures were damaged. Governor Newsom has signed another round of bills and has vetoed others. The issues range from climate change to health care costs to psychedelic drugs. The governor vetoed a bill that would have capped the cost of insulin at $35 per month. He also vetoed a bill that would have made California the first U.S. state to outlaw caste-based discrimination, as well as another one that would have decriminalized the use of psychedelic mushrooms. But the governor says despite the veto, he supports further research. As for the bills Newsom signed off on, they include two focusing on corporations' impact on climate. One requires companies with at least a billion dollars in annual revenue to publicly disclose their greenhouse gas emissions, even from activities like employee travel. The other requires companies to release reports every two years on climate-related financial risks and how they plan to reduce that risk. He also signed a bill authorizing the State Lands Commission to approve a project to revitalize Piers 30 through 32 right here in San Francisco. The governor signed more than three dozen bills, including one getting rid of junk fees. We have a full breakdown on our website, kpix.com. The governor still has to make a decision on a bill that would decriminalize fare evasion on public transportation. Right now, getting caught jumping a gate three times or more is classified as a misdemeanor, which could land them with a $400 fine or the possibility of 90 days in jail. But if Newsom signs the bill, that jail time would be off the table. The majority of BART's board has been campaigning the governor to veto the bill, saying now is not the time for BART to loosen its stance on criminal behavior. But supporters say enforcement of fair evasion can be discriminatory and that it's not worth it. Now more than ever, we have to do everything we can to convince riders that BART is serious about providing a clean and safe environment for riders. If we are now decriminalizing even a small provision like this that's not used very often, uh, that sends the wrong message. They have a lot of work to do over there at BART to make their stations safe, to keep costs down. And, and I think this bill is just saying, uh, figure out better ways to do it than putting people in jail. In the meantime, BART says new fare gates will help cut down on fare evasion, with the first new gates set to go up in West Oakland before the end of the year. <laughs>